Can we observe the shape of the Earth with a consumer-grade camera? Many people would consider boats going over the horizon to be foundational evidence for the round Earth. Is it really that simple? While the appearance of bottom-up obstruction remains without a proven counter-argument, we do sometimes see too far, or see too much, compared to what we might expect with simple geometric predictions. Given the variability of atmospheric refraction and other variables, this is not surprising. Observations low over water can be extremely inconsistent. The purpose of this video is to evaluate an alternative method of Earth observation. It isn't new by any means, but with it I hope to offer some clarity in a debate full of misunderstanding. This is Big Bear Lake in Southern California, home to a popular ski resort. I'm flying over the area in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There are many mountain peaks in the immediate vicinity up to about 10,000 feet. If you were to climb these peaks, you can see quite a long way out to the east into the Mojave Desert. Big Bear Mountain Resort offers a number of controllable webcams around the resort and ski slopes. Here is a view from the Bear Peak webcam at an elevation of 8,805 feet or 2,683 meters. If we navigate the camera to the east, we can see peaks over 90 miles or 150 kilometers away. It's often claimed that the curve of the Earth cannot be measured or seen anywhere. Surely it could be seen at this distance. This publicly accessible webcam will offer an easy way to make repeat observations. Now that we've located an observation point, we need to identify what we're seeing and find numbers we are confident in. For this application, Google Earth should offer more than enough accuracy. In this photo, I will focus on six main peaks at three distances. This nearby ridge is called Granite Peaks East. In the middle are the Bullion Mountains. Edgar Peak and others, the furthest, are located here. Panorama Generator, or another peak finding program, is often useful. I have listed the elevations and distances that I collected from Google Earth and other sources. You can confirm these for yourself. This is an elevation profile along the whole line of sight. Approximately, the average elevation of the line of sight is between 500 and 1,000 meters, much higher than popular observations low to the water. As stated in the introduction, observations at very low elevation can be subject to extreme day-to-day, -day, hour to hour or even minute to minute changes. Over the past year, I collected dozens of screenshots when the farthest peaks were visible. They are often obscured by haze. The question we should ask is, does this view ever change? If you've spent a good amount of time watching Flat Earth and Flat Earth debunking videos, you will no doubt have heard the term standard refraction. Standard refraction is, in layman's terms, a way of quantifying the effect of atmospheric refraction on average. It is by no means an exclusive rule, since the atmosphere is highly variable. The concept of standard refraction does not necessarily assume the shape of the Earth. Shortly, we will be taking a look at what refraction we actually expect. As confirmed with observations from low to the ground or water, 
Standard refraction is not applicable close to the surface. However, we can evaluate refraction for this and other high altitude observations. To do this, I have downloaded nearly two years worth of weather balloon data from the NOAA IGRA for the Edwards Air Force Base Station. All of this data is freely available to the public, though it can be challenging to unpack and organize in a meaningful way. I have plotted one day worth of temperature, pressure, and humidity gradients from this data. Anyone who recalls high school physics may remember covering refraction and Snell's law. You likely performed an experiment where you calculated the angle of refraction of a laser as it passed in and out of a glass object. The most important detail is that light will refract toward the denser medium, or more specifically, the medium with the higher index of refraction. I would recommend that you learn more about the application of Snell's law or even do an experiment yourself. For all measurements of temperature, pressure, and humidity, I have calculated the index of refraction in Microsoft Excel. I used the simplified version of the Edlin and Sidor index of refraction equations. These equations are incredibly complicated, but the simplified version offers more than enough accuracy for this application. All we need to know is the general trend within the atmosphere, but feel free to verify the accuracy using the calculator on this page of the NIST website. These equations have been extensively validated using experimental measurements with refractometers. In this graph, calculated from the previously shown conditions, you can see that the index of refraction decreases with height. But this was just one day. How about two years worth? Here is a plot of the change of refractivity per meter plotted with height. This tells us a lot. It's clear that there is a trend which tightens with height above the ground. That is, refraction is more consistent the higher you go, and more variable the closer to the ground you are. Of course, this matches with our experience in reality. On the right side of the plot are measurements indicating upward refraction or sinking. On the left side, we predict downward refraction or looming. The conclusion is, in high altitude observations, a mild amount of looming consistent with standard refraction is predicted. The observation of distant mountain peaks should almost always look the same, as long as the line of sight is high above the ground. I hear very frequently that globers don't account for perspective in curve calculations. So let's do just that. Let's use perspective. I have modeled the observation to scale with nothing but paper, a ruler, and a cell phone, and a few Legos. Now let's compare to what we see in reality. I have used Panorama Generator in order to overlay a grid of degrees. I will let the evidence speak for itself.